Greetings Boffins and welcome to the Boffin Lab. I am Triton and this is a guide on how to set up a game of Warhammer 40,000 on Tabletop Simulator. There are several arguments why to, you should use a Tabletop Simulator like this one to play Warhammer 40,000. The fact that you might want to try out a different faction before actually buying the models is the first one. But your friends may live too far away to join you for a game. Or you may want to play when you don't have the space for a gaming table or the miniatures or any of the bits. This gives you a chance to try the game for a minimal cost and play without having to have everything else in place. However, I do encourage you to try and paint miniatures and give that a go because it's a lot of fun. In order to get set up, you need a few mods from the workshop in a Tabletop Simulator. And all you have to do is go to the workshop page and have a look. You need two or three things largely. One is a way of building your army. Two is a way of uh, playing the game on a table. And the third is terrain and map packs. Though we'll just start with the basics at this stage and work our way through. So the first thing you are going to need is a way to build your army. And the most basic way is to use the Combat Patrol Kit, which lets you import a pre-generated 500 point army from each of the factions. All you have to do is subscribe to it and it's already loaded and ready to use. Even the stat cards are there. If you want to create your own army, you will need the Force Org mod, which is a collection of miniatures made by various different people for each of the factions and collected together by one person. The last thing you need is the Warhammer table itself. And Warhammer 40k 10e table is the mod that I'm using for this demonstration. It has map, terrain, dice, rules, everything you need. If you've never played Warhammer 40k, then I recommend you start with a combat patrol. To load this up, hit games, and then navigate to uh, where you've saved the combat patrol in your, th in your directory and load it. It will load all of the factions, and there is a army for each of the factions that are in the game at the moment. These armies are balanced and set up for a 500 point game. There's also a set of rules somewhere on the table that you can download and use when you need to. Notice that there is a little bag beside each faction. What you do is you zoom in on one of the bags, hit the place button, and the miniatures will be spawned next to it along with a set of rules and some tokens. As you can see, the miniatures are pretty impressive to begin with, and they can be manipulated and moved as you wish to use them. Mousing over a token or a miniature will give you the rules on the item. Hitting Alt will show you a information card for the special rules, and there is a booklet for each of the item armies so that you can get an idea of their abilities and their history. I recommend you use the scale up function to make this book big enough to read effectively and the mouse wheel will scroll through the pages of the booklet so that you can see the whole information of the army that you're going to play. This is the best way for you to choose what you want to do and get a feel for which army you want to try and use, as it gives all the stats, the tactics, the styles, and so on. Once you've decided which army you want to use, you can pack all of the army back into the bag using the recall function. Then right click on the bag and choose save object. Give it a proper name somewhere and it might even be worth putting it in a decent folder and then save the object for you to grab out of your storage at a later date. And that's all you have to do to have a ready army 
for a combat patrol. Your opponent will have to do the same thing for one of the other factions, but that's done. If you want to design your own army, the currently recommended tool is newrecruit.eu. Now, it's important to notice that this seems to save data locally. If you do not have an account, and you'll notice that my system does not currently have an account, you're not saving your data to a cloud of any kind, which means that if you clear your browser cache or you'll change browser or something like that, you will lose your army lists. So I recommend you create an account and you save up your lists onto this syncing cloud. Now to start, you select the game that you want to play. It's not showing you the menu at the moment, but I've selected Warhammer 40,000 10th edition from the list. And then you create a list using the button there. This will give you the option of choosing the faction. And once again, it's not showing those factions, but all the factions are represented. And then you set the point limits and then you hit the add force button and then hit create list as you can see this gives you the list of the currently loaded points for just about all of your army and uh, any options they will have however i will use a saved list in order to explain how this works you can look at the details for this list at a later stage one thing to notice is that the list points values will be as up to date as possible and you'll have to agree on what the latest list should be with your friends. Now I've loaded up a list that I've created before which is an 1000 point suggested Tyranid force and what you do next is you go to the list options at the top right, click on that and choose export and when you've hit export you will be given a set of options choose the yellow scribe you might have to click it twice because it's a little stubborn and it will copy a code to your clipboard it might be worth putting this code down on a notepad or something like that but that's all you need this browser for at this stage now you want to set up your miniatures so go to your workshop and look up the force org uh, the mod which you have downloaded and i'm just having troubles finding it but it's there in front of me i'm blind just load the table as a whole table don't use the additive load it will load up a selection of all the factions and the collected assembly of the miniatures that have been found or developed for those factions since I'm going to be doing the Tyranids, I am loading all the available models for the Tyranid Swarm. You'll notice that there are three different groups. So these have been sourced from three different artists or uh, contributors at this stage. And each one has a different aesthetic to it. And this will give you the option of choosing which ones you want to use for your force. As you can see, I kind of prefer the ones on the left. They have more color and detail to them, but this is uh, a matter of preference. Click on the yellow button between the two bags and paste in the code you got from New Recruit. The uh, tech priests do their thing and a collection of cards now appear on the table between the two mats at the bottom. There's a scroll bar there to go through the rest of your army so you can see them all. Now, what you're supposed to do at this point in time is assign a miniature to each card. You click on the card, it goes pink, and then you look for the miniature you want to assign to it. Click on the miniature, and a miniature is selected. The card goes green that's assigned you would do this for all of your other miniatures in the group and work your way through the entire group there's no need to actually drag miniatures onto the map but it is uh, convenient to have them handy sometimes if you've got multiple miniatures in the army of the same type but there is 
a trick you can use to make it easier. If you hit games and go down to save load and then save your current game with the miniatures uh, arrayed on the field with your cards there, just give it a generic name for the moment that you can erase at a later date and save it. You will be given the option to search that save. If you mouse over it and click on the little dice, you can tick on that and choose search. And then you can type in the name of what you're looking for. I'm looking for termagants. And these are all the termagants in the army. And I select the ones that I like. It looks like a bunch of them have been scaled up or down. So you might have to play with the scale. But I choose the termagants that I want for this next miniature. Click on them, drag them out onto the model, drop them on the base, right click to cancel, and then I select the card and assign the miniature. I do, I want a different look for my Termagants for the second Termagant squad, so I go and find the Termagants, which I happen to know where they are. So I find a different looking Termagant to assign to that squad. And it'll work my way through with the rest of the units. Now, the Von Ryan Leapers, there are three models available for the Von Ryan Leapers, and I want to use one of each of them. So, what I'm going to try and do is I select the entire group, and then I move the models to one side so I can work on them. Now, I discovered that cloning the models doesn't work, that creates one copy of one of the models. If you copy the models though, you will then be able to put the originals back where they came from and go to your little force mat on the right hand side and click and paste the set of leapers. Once again, I click on the Von Ryan leapers card and select them and it seems to select that entire group as the leapers for that mo model card. We'll check, show how it works later on. Now I search for the last three models in my kit. I go into the search function on the table again, searching for the exocrine. There are several different options for me. I choose the one I like, paste it out on the board, and I can basically sit here and search for every model that I want before I actually start assigning them. I don't need to uh, search individually at one at a time. So I am getting the last three models I need for the, for the, um, the army, putting them on the pad there, and I, then I will assign them. can't spell Tyranid. There are several models there that I don't like the look of, of but I end up selecting the, um, the one on the far left and putting it on the board. I'm going to enjoy scaring my opponent with that model later on. So click on the card, assign the model, click on the card, Assign the model, click on the card, and assign the last model. And now you just scroll through to make sure that all of your models are assigned. Now, you could, if you wanted to have a characterful army with a lot of different variations, not assign a model, but assemble a collection of models instead, if you wanted to do this. Then you come over here and you hit Create Army, and it creates a board where it's replicated all the models that you've assigned ready for you in a nice neat collection and they will match your army list they're clones but it looks like the von ryan leapers have been copied as a threesome and so that there is uh, some variety in that set of models there when you mouse over the models you will find that there's a stats uh, page and you can even keep track of their hit points but you're not finished with the job yet 
there's a bag here full of stratagems and you want to look for the basic stratagems first, pull those out, then look for the stratagems specific to your uh, faction. So there's the Tyranid stratagems. Now, I have found out that there are multiple stratagems for the Tyranid faction. You might even have to search for that and work out which one is applying to your particular uh, group. But you can drag it out onto the board and make it available for you. And it will have the cards in it that you need for your uh, data cards. When you're finished with a bag, make sure you close the search first so that you can then put the bag back into the original source. And now you can take out stratagems from the bag that you've just uh, opened and you can see the stratagems when you need them. Okay, stratagems have been organized. The next step is to actually use your unit cards and the yellow bag on the right has the unit cards for everything. Once again, right click and search. Now for Space Marines, there is a lot of generic Space Marine data sheets. So we'll just have a look at that, but I want the Tyranid group. So I grab the Tyranid bot bag out, but I'm going to show you the Space Marines first so that you can see that the Space Marines have in fact got the faction specific bags at the top and the generic cards for everything else in the Space Marine armies that you might need. So you might have to dig a little deeper in each bag to find the cards that you're after. Now I'm going to shove, search my way through the uh, Tyranids uh, data sheet bag and all I have to do is type in the search and drag the card out. Holding Alt down will let me view it, but I find it's a good idea to scale it up about 10 steps to make it much easier to read. And now you can see it. You can also use F to flip the card and move it over. So I work my way through the list. I eventually work out the best way to do this is to create a pile of cards and do the scaling up on all of them as a group. Rather than doing them individually like this. So I'll just speed up the next few seconds so you can see what I've done and we will progress. There's something here that I do in a moment that is worth looking at. I find my termagants and I find the card and I then clone it and make two copies of the card so that I've got a card for each. Depends on how you want to work your system. You might only want to keep one card. Now that I've got them all, I can select them all and scale them all up to roughly the same size. And then I select the whole lot and group them together and they become a stack of cards that I can take apart at will. Nice and neat and tidy. There are now one more thing to do and that is to save your miniatures kit. Group your stratagems together with your cards and your miniatures and the one way to do it would be to select that entire pile together and then right click on one of the items and choose save object. Now it seems the item you choose becomes the picture for the, uh, the saved object. But if you save the object and give it a name, um, don't keep the default name because that will probably be this, just the name of the item that you selected. But you save the name um, it is probably worth creating a folder structure for this, but make sure it's distinctive enough for you to find it easily. And if you then import this into a game, it will be laid out exactly the way it's been saved in that very format, nice and easily managed. However, if you wanted to, there's another option. You can go to the objects at the top of the page and select components. 
and then go to tools and there is an infinite number of bags there that you can spawn and clone onto your uh, table. You can then change the color of the bags at will, depending on what you want, prefer. You can give the bags a name by changing the names on the on the uh, the text at the bottom, and then you can sort your units any way you want into any number of bags you want into and finally into the last bag so what i'm doing as a demonstration is i'm taking one card and the creature that goes with it dragging them into a bag and then naming that bag after the unit that it's part of and once that bag has been sorted out, I then drag it into the master bag that will hold my entire unit. You could then go through the rest of your army and do this, and then all you would save is the bag as an object, and the whole thing would be saved correctly. Or you could drop the entire thing into the bag as a whole unit and that's another option the downside is that when you start taking things out of the bag they come out one at a time and so uh, the unpacking of the bag is a little bit more cumbersome than say saving the whole layout later on so now that you've got an army and your opponent has an army, you want to load the Warhammer 40,000 map table. And I'm just having troubles finding it, but it is there. Load it as a whole. Do not additive load because you don't need what was there on the table before. Now, first thing that each person is probably going to want to do is import their army. If you're doing combat patrols, there's can sometimes cause a problem, but find your army by going to objects, saved objects, and look for the army itself. There's my starter Tyranid kit, and that's the bag that I, I assembled. As an example, you could see that it's got all the bags in it ready for me to deploy. Now, the other option is my Termagant laid out ready to use kit so i'm going to drag that onto the board and you see that it spawns the miniatures the cards and the the bags that you need for your rules straight away ready to use um that should be enough to scare anybody if you just drag those suddenly onto the table nice and quick and easy I've also got a copy of the rules and the combat patrol rules, which I'm going to drag onto the table to make sure that they're easily available. And you can scale these up so they're easily readable as well. And you can clone them so both sides have one. Next stage is that you will probably have to do the same thing for your opponent, but you will like to have a look at the mats and battle mats that are available. You can either, sh either shuffle them using the R key or that shuffle option and randomly pull a mat out of the bag, wait for it to load, and then snap it to the grid. Like that. The right-click option gives you the ability to lock it in place using the toggles, or you can use the hotkey L to lock it so that it won't move. Okay, I can't drag it. Then what you would probably do is uh, use your objectives to get out objectives. Now, there seems to be a bug with this bag, and I'm not exactly sure why it's doing that, but I'm slowly pulling objectives out of it, putting them on the board, come back. I got one. And you would drag them out of the bag and put them on the board as per the rules. Then you would go about arranging terrain. So I'm just going to skip 
to where I finally got all the objectives. And now I can start locking the objectives in place. So right click on an objective once it's in the place you want it to put it and hit the lock and it'll lock to the board. So it can't be moved easily unless you unlock it. Uh, click to lock and lock again. So at this point you would then start playing with the terrain. Now, if you wanted to generate your terrain yourself, there is a big bag of terrain available for you here with all sorts of things. You can randomize what comes out of the bag and simply drag it onto the board and then lock it in place. Uh, or you can shuffle what's in the bag and randomly grab something else out. Uh, we will have a look at a few other buildings. Orc buildings. These were not as exciting as I thought, unless I had a look through the list. I just randomly pulled out some sort of wall. And then I go looking for alien flora, which is in the top corner. Shuffle that, and I pull out. Uh, some sort of alien tree. Make sure once you finish selecting all your terrain to lock them in place. Now, one of the good things about this is it often gives you the rules for the terrain when you mouse over them. But to remove them again, you've got to unlock them and then you can delete them or put them back in the bag as you wish. Now, one of the problems a lot of people have is uh, the fair distribution of terrain and there is a mod that you get that has the um, tournament setups of the terrain you can also get all these tournament maps that are created on the the uh, workshop which you can import um, they come complete with objective markers already in place but this WC World Team Tournament uh, mod will be additive loaded to the group and if I'm correct I believe it's actually loaded underneath the battle mat so I load it a second time and it loads above the battle mat You'll probably have this exact same frustration as I did. Just make sure not to accidentally load fully rather than additive load. There's the items there. So I select them and move them. I can see the ones under the mat there available. I can click on those. I just select everything, move them to one side. And we can have a closer look at how they work. Now, apparently all you need to do is pull out one of the mats. And you can then basically immediately assign all the zones and the, uh, and the terrain from that. Uh, campaign or mission as per the the rules on the um, tournament rules. You hit the load map and it will I've got to remove the objectives that I had before just in case but I found that the objectives didn't load last time so this might be a good step for you to put the objectives on yourself. I have selected the uh, load map and it l appears to have loaded a new battle map as well as the terrain. I suspect the objectives are layered between the two so this is something to experiment with but you will have to set it up accordingly. Uh, there is a bunch of different maps and objective layouts based on the mission and the tournament style that you want to do. It's worth having a study and see how it goes. But as you can see, it's fairly evenly distributed.
The last thing I'll show you is the dice spawner. There's some buttons to choose the number of dice. There's a roll button. You can hit it multiple times to get your dice to really roll. And then you can choose the button you want to select the dice that do not fit to that category. So everything that's left on the board were fours and ups. Then you can select them and roll them again and do the same thing. There's a lot of uh, uh, ability to play here, but the dice spawner does have a limit of 100 dice. You can't go above that, which might make it a little difficult if you're a guard unit with so many LAS rifles. It's difficult to count. From here, it's a matter of playing with mods and trying new things, but you are basically ready to start playing a game. The tools are all there, measurement tools, movement tools. Just be certain to lock the table so that it cannot be flipped. Uh, it hurts to watch all these models go flying on the floor, even though they're not real. So there's a, a, a special option in the options tab that allows who's allowed to flip the table and who's not. So now you're ready to play, you'll be able to discover which faction you really enjoy and which faction you want to collect and paint. I highly encourage you to try this, particularly allows you to play with friends that are living in distant cities uh, and uh, gives you an opportunity to try a new faction if you're thinking about collecting it. That's it for the uh, tutorial and demonstration. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and good hunting on the battlefield.